Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go over how to determine a calorimeter constant and uh, find the specific heat of a metal using that calorimeter constant. Um, so here's a picture of our calorimeter. Basically it's two styrofoam cups with the styrofoam lid on it. And what we're going to do is look at some data where we mix some hot water and some cold water and, uh, and see if the heat absorbed equals the heat released. Okay. So a um, couple of different things we can kind of write down as far as background. Okay. So our heat formula, Q equals M times C times delta T, okay? So Q is heat, M is going to stand for mass, um, C is going to stand for specific heat, uh, sometimes you'll see uh, specific heat abbreviated with a capital italicized S. Um, C is also used, sometimes it's also called heat capacity. Your delta T is your change in temperature, which we calculate by taking T final minus T initial. Okay, And in any type of a heat calculation, what we've always assumed in the past is that the heat that is absorbed by a substance is going to be equal to the negative of the heat that is released. Okay, So that's a big assumption that uh, we're going to investigate today. Um, so what we did uh, to be able to test this theory of heat absorbed equals negative heat released is by mixing hot and cold water, keeping track of masses and uh, temperature changes. So let's take a look at some of the data that uh, I collected recently. Okay. So uh, taking a look at the data, my masses were about equal, but this would, this, uh, would really hold true even if the uh, masses weren't uh, equal. So I've got my masses, my... Uh, initial temperatures, my final temperatures, and your change in temperature. And notice that when, if you're doing this lab, you're always going to find that your, oops, that's not the right spot. Uh, notice that the uh, final temperatures are always going to be equal to each other. When you take something hot and cold and you uh, mix them together, they'll reach equilibrium. And that, that equilibrium temperature is the final temperature. Okay. So, um, so what we can do first to examine this idea about heat absorbed and heat released, let's find the heat of the cold water. Okay. So uh, for this, we would take the mass, 48.39. I'm going to run out of space here. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll do this uh, maybe on the bottom here. Oops. Move this down a little bit. So the heat uh, of the cold... Okay, uh, 48.39 grams times my specific heat of water, which we should know is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, and then my change in temperature was positive 11.6 degrees. Sometimes we don't write the positive in there, but in this case, it's an important idea. And so we're coming out with uh, 2346 joules. Okay, I'm not going to worry. I guess I've got four sig figs there. Maybe I could have gone to three, um, but um, that's the idea. Okay, let's move this up a little bit. Uh, now I want to find the heat that is released by the hot water. Okay, so I'll take the mass 48.46 times the specific heat of water 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and I had a negative 12.5 degrees temperature change. So when I do my calculation, I come up with a negative value because my temperature change was a negative and 2532. Okay. So what we can see is that my change in temperatures, or excuse me, my, um, my heat absorbed does not equal my heat released. Okay. These two values are not equal uh, and opposite sign. So what we assume to be the case is that the calorimeter absorbed uh, some heat. So what we need to do is try to figure out that idea uh, and, um, and how much heat the calorimeter actually absorbed. Okay, So we're going to move down. I'm going to move some of my data that I collected here, move down this a little bit. Okay, so we'll wait on this. OK, so to be able to think about this idea properly, okay, we're going to, again, we're going to, we had this idea that the heat absorbed 
equals the negative of heat that's released. Okay, but we also know the calorimeter is absorbing uh, heat, so we're going to add heat of the calorimeter on the left hand side. So my values, my values for my heat absorbed were 2346 joules. My heat released um, was a negative 2532. Okay, so doing a little algebra, what we can do is we can figure out that the calorimeter absorbed the difference between these two values here, and that should be about 186 joules. So that's how much heat was absorbed by the calorimeter. Now to figure out your calorimeter constant, um, we need to take our uh, joules that, um, or the heat that was absorbed by the calorimeter, and divide it by the change in temperature um, of, our, of our cold water. So this is what we're going to do for our calorimeter constant. Okay. Um, so again, it's equal to our amount of heat absorbed divided by our change in temperature of our cold water, okay, which was positive 11.6 degrees. And doing our division, it comes out to about 16 joules for every degree Celsius. So for every degree Celsius of temperature change, our calorimeter would absorb 16 uh, joules of energy. Okay? So this is an important uh, idea that we need to think about when we're calculating the specific heat of a metal. Okay? Um, so uh, we're going to move on and sort of incorporate this. Here's some data that uh, I collected when I was trying to find the specific heat of aluminum. Okay? Now, just for time reasons, um, what I'm going to kind of do is kind of go through uh, my calculations pretty quickly. So we're going to start out by finding how much heat was absorbed by the water in this case. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to take my mass of my water times my specific heat okay, uh, times, so I can fit this in here, my temperature change, which was positive 2.3 degrees. All right. And then that's going to equal about 521.4 joules. Okay. Now, I'm first going to do this calculation assuming that the that if the water absorbed 521 joules of energy that the aluminum must have released that same amount. Okay. So then um, rearranging my equation to solve for C it would be Q over M delta T and so then uh, my heat absorbed, excuse me, a heat released by the aluminum would be negative 521.4 uh, joules of energy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to divide my, by the mass, 9.55 grams, and my change in temperature would be negative 72.9 degrees. So my specific heat that I would calculate for aluminum without considering the calorimeter constant would be about 0.75 joules per gram degree Celsius. And so uh, the accepted value is more like 0.89 joules per gram degree Celsius for aluminum. Um, so let's see if we can get close to that value with um, incorporating our calorimeter constant. Okay. So keeping in mind um, our calorimeter constant from above was 16 joules per degree Celsius. Okay. Um, let's take a look at um, what would happen if we incorporate our uh, calorimeter constant into this? Okay, so thinking about you know our Q absorbed and Q released. Okay, so I have my Q released um, is going to be our negative there um, equal to our Q absorbed by the cold water plus the Q of the calorimeter. Okay, so keeping that in mind, so my absorbed heat. Okay, from above was 521.4 uh, joules, okay, right here. So that's my Q absorbed. Okay, the heat absorbed by my calorimeter, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take 
since we're using the same calorimeter, that's important, our calorimeter constant, joules per gram degree Celsius, and multiply by the temperature change that we saw in this reaction, which was um, positive 2.3, okay? So our new heat released value, okay, doing our calculations here, um, is going to be negative 557.8 joules. Okay, plugging that into our, our equation from before, where C equals Q over M delta T, okay, I'm going to get negative 55. 7.8 joules over my mass, okay, and my mass was 9.55, and my temperature change was negative 72.9 degrees, and my new specific heat value, incorporating the calorimeter constant, is going to be 0.8 joules over gram degree Celsius. So a big improvement in terms of uh, being closer to the accepted value comparing our two specific heat values. Okay, Hopefully this helps you understand how to calculate the calorimeter constant uh, and then also um, how to incorporate that when finding the specific heat of a metal. Thanks for watching.